Greetings from IITM student community. Those who are interested in joining our qualifier coaching may contact the given WhatsApp number to enroll. We will cover full syllabus along with mock tests and graded assignment detailed explanation. With 24 7 hours doubt clearance support. Question. Moving on to the next question. The next question is. Um, Suppose there are two families F1 and F2 living in a two different cities and they pay X1 and X2 per unit respectively for electric consumption each month. In April 2023, the electric consumption for by F1 and F2 is 30 units and 25 units respectively. In May 2023, it was 20 units and 30 units respectively. The total amount paid by the families together for electric cons consumption in April May is 520 and 500. So basically, this question says that there are two families. Let's analyze the question. There are two families, F1 and F2. So basically, F1 is located in one city and F2 is located in another city. Basically, it is given that F1 is going to pay X1 rupees per unit and F2 is going to pay X2 rupees per unit so it is given that in the month of april uh, f1 had used 30 units and f2 had used 25 units and in the month of may f1 has used 20 units and f2 had used 30 units so basically what they are telling here is the total amount of money total amount of money both the families together going to pay in the April month was 520 rupees and in the May month was 500 rupees ok now let's uh, they are asking that uh, what is the correct equation which represents this current scenario so now let's uh, solve this question so we know cost of each unit is x1 rupees so in the month of April now let's frame the equation for this situation it is going to be 30 into x1 plus 25 into x2 is equal to 520 rupees we know all this gets cancelled by 5 it's 6 times 5 and 5 times 5 and it is not going to be 104 so finally the equation is going to look like 6x1 plus 5x2 is equal to 104 so here it is uh, 20x1 in May month of May plus 30x2 is equal to 500. First of all, this zeros get cancelled. It is 2x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 50. So these are the two equations. So the answer is going to be option 3. The answer is going to be option 1. Okay. Now to solve this uh, next question, the we have to use the equations which have uh, we have obtained in this first one. For this, uh, let's do it in the graphical form. Now let's consider these two equations. One is six x plus five y. Let's uh, consider the x two as x two as y because for our easy representation, six x plus five y. Is equal to 104 and now the second equation we have got 2x plus 3y is equal to 50 so as explained by the professors the answer and the solution for both the equations will be the point of intersection of both the equations so here we got that x1 that is x in this graph is 7.75 7 and x2 that is y in this graph is equal to 11.5 as per the question they have asked for x2 minus x1 is equal to 
3.75 so the answer for this question is 3.75 so this is the way to solve your linear equations using the graph so you have to define both the equations and the point of intersection will give you the solution for the two equations moving to the next question the next question is uh, this is also the same way we have to use the graph it is given that an electrical engineer is working with a solar panel installation so here basically what they it is is we know this graph this equation so they're telling that uh, in the first case let is let, let me name it as first case substituting the given values in this equation we get 18 is equal to 3r plus epsilon epsilon and in the second case substituting the values in the given equation we get 28 volts is equal to 5 amp into r plus epsilon so these are going to be the two equations equation number one and equation number two so we have to solve this both equation we have we can either solve this in a graphical way or just simply do the subtraction let's do 2 minus 1 we get it as 28 is equal to 5r plus epsilon 18 is equal to 3r plus epsilon when we subtract we get this epsilon epsilon get cancelled we get 10 is equal to 2r so basically we get r as 5 ohms so substituting this in either equation 1 or 2 we get 18 is equal to 15 plus epsilon that implies epsilon is equal to 3 volts so the correct answer is option number 2 moving to the next question a room contains 120 chairs which are arranged in rows and columns the number of chairs per row is one less than number of the rows one less than why is the number of the rows so basically now let's define something let the number of rows number of rows is equal to x and the number of chairs in a row is equal to y it is given that the relation the number of chairs in a row y is equal to 1 less than that twice the number of the row that implies 2x minus 1 so we know the total number of chairs is equal to number of rows into number of chairs in a row that is x into y that is equal to given that 120 as it is given in the question it is 120 chairs so substituting the value of y in terms of x in this equation we get x into 2x minus 1 is equal to 120 that we get 2x square minus x minus 120 is equal to 0 on solving this equation we get 2x into x minus 8 plus 15 into x minus 8 is equal to 0 that implies 2x plus 15 into x minus 8 is equal to 0 we get x is equal to 8 and x is equal to 7.5 minus 7.5 as the number of chairs cannot be minus in negative numbers so the number of chairs is equal to 8 so substituting this uh, so sorry the number of rows is equal to 8 as we have defined x as the number of rows the number of rows is equal to 8 the number of chairs in each row substituting the value of x in this um, equation we get y is equal to 2 into 8 minus 1 that is equal to 17 sorry 16 minus 1 that is equal to 15 so the answer is the number of rows is 8 and the number of chairs per row are going to be 15 the correct answer is option 2 it is given that a ball is thrown from 3 meter side from here uh, off the ground that means uh, in the upward direction and it reaches a maximum height of 5 meters and the ball returns to a height of 3 meters after 2 seconds let h is equal to okay, this is the equation they are asking what is the value of a so this is the parabola parabola and given that the equation of the parabola is h is equal to a t square plus b t plus c so we know the vertex of the parabola is uh, vertex is uh, minus b by 2a and it is 5 meters the y coordinate is given 5 so now uh, 
substituting these two points in this given equation we get 5 is equal to a into b square by 4 a square plus b into minus b by 2a plus 5 plus c so from this equation this a and this a get can going to get cancelled that is equal to b square by 4a minus b square by 2a plus c we get uh, 5 is equal to minus b square by 4a plus c so we know c is the intercept of the parabola as it is given that intercept of this parabola is 3 meters you can substitute uh, c as 3 we get uh, then substituting the 3 c as 3 we get Two is equal to minus b square by four a. That implies uh, minus b square is equal to eight a. This is one of these, right? And it is said that uh, the ball returns to a height of three meters after two seconds. That implies uh, substituting the value three is equal to four a plus two b plus three. That implies two b is equal to minus four a. That implies b is equal to minus 2a. That implies uh, minus of uh, b square means 4a square is equal to 8a. a square a square gets cancelled. We get a is equal to minus 2. Finally, the answer for this question a is equal to minus 2 is going to be the answer. So now moving on to the last question of this uh, graded assignment. So it is uh, they are asking uh, which of the following graphs may represent functions. So basically you have been taught by the professors uh, uh, sets, relations and functions. So you know that every function is a relation but not every relation is a function. So basically uh, what is the rule for a, fun for a relation to become function is uh, to define this we have we have two two sets one is domain and one is codomain so what is the condition for a relation to become a function is one element in domain must only map for one element in the codomain it means that an an element in a domain let's say x must not map for two elements in the codomain like x x mapping to 1 and x mapping to 2 this not it is not going to be an function only in the case x is only mapping for either 1 or 2 then it is going to be a function it must be this condition must be satisfied by all the like all the elements in this domain or else we can say that no domain must have two images in the codomain so to verify that what we will do we are going to draw some straight lines perpendicular to the x-axis or parallel to the y-axis if the straight line cuts only one at one point to the graph then it is going to be a function and if not it is going to be a relation so if we check in that way if we draw anywhere in this first option uh, a straight line parallel to y-axis we are going to get only one point of intersection so it is going to be answer when we come to this question uh, the second option we are going to find that when we are going to draw a straight line like this we are going to find out uh, two points getting intersected with the Curve. So this is not going to be the answer. And when you come to the third question, third option, when we are going to draw straight lines like this, it is going to cut once again at two points. So this is also not going to be the answer for this question. And when we come for the fourth question, for fourth option, it is going to satisfy our requirement. So this is going to be the answer. Hope all of you enjoyed this session and all of you got clear with these concepts and the questions. Thank you. Signing off IIT Madras student community. Thanks for watching. Join the channel the 119th plan only by clicking the join button after subscribing to the channel to see the remaining part of our graded assignment videos. Please note IITM student community has launched IITM BS in ES qualifier coaching at just 799 rupees. See you in the next video. Bye.